Welcome to Hanson Speed Shop. It's time for another one of my muscle bike riding reviews. And today we're doing this 1964 Schwinn Stingray Super Deluxe. An ultra rare bike that is one of my personal favorites in my collection. And uh, we're going to get right into this one because this is really going to be a cool one. Alright guys, so here it is. This is an ultra rare built in November of 1964. Opal Violet Schwinn Stingray Super Deluxe. This bike is um, originally from Southern California. It's an original paint survivor, and I am absolutely thrilled to have this thing in my collection. This bike was a long time coming. This has pretty much been like uh, this and a 68 Orange Crate have been my two dream um, Schwinn since I found out that there was such a thing. Um, so I've been really wanting to get one of these um, and especially this color. We're gonna talk more about that in a little bit. Um, the bike is a survivor bike, um, but really it is in pretty good, good condition. Um, the paint, there's not a ton of paint left, but you know, I've always, would rather have one speck of original paint than a repainted bike and this being one of the uh, rarest colors that Schwinn offered. Um, Schwinn started offering this particular shade in 63 um, and 64 and you could also get it in 65 but it was a very limited quantity um, for each year that you could get that color. Um, they also offered a, a regular violet which was more of a I guess you'd say a magenta where this was a, a deeper purple color. Um, and this bike, like I said, came out of Southern California. Um, now I did have to collect a few other parts for it that were missing, um, but we're gonna talk about everything that comes on a 1964 uh, Schwinn Stingray Super Deluxe. I believe the package when you went to the Schwinn dealer and you wanted a uh, Super Deluxe, so it's called a J33, and that meant that you got the uh, Springer front end. That's really what made this a Super Deluxe. Um, also on a Super Deluxe, you could tend to get um, white wall tires. Um, you could get um, a deep tufted seat, which this does not have, but I've also seen them set up like this with black wall tires and just the regular solo polo seat. But this was original um, Springer fork frame and you can tell because of the, it has the dents right here on both sides where the fork would hit um, this part of the fork because there's no fork stops hits the frame right here. Um, this is just such a cool color, a very, the Stingray Super Deluxes with the Springers in the early years, 64 I believe was the first year for that. Very limited quantity combined with this pretty rare color makes this probably one of the rarest um, Stingrays that you could get in 1964. So let's talk about what makes a 64 Schwinn Stingray special. Well, basically the 64 was the first full year of production. 63 was the first year that the Stingray came out, um, but it was offered like late, like 63 and a half, and it wasn't really marketed too much. They just kind of made a bunch of bikes and seen if they would sell. They sold out right away. So then for 64, they went to full production on the Schwinn Stingray. Um, but 64 was the last year for this square back style sissy bar and this solo polo style seat. Um, so this seat um, on 63 and fours was made by Persons or Pearsons. I'm not sure how you want to pronounce that. Um, they made these seats for Schwinn. In 1965, they went to basically the standard kind of style um, banana seat. Also in 1964, you got this square back sissy bar. Um, it's unique. This is a one year only sissy bar um, because it has this crimped portion right here um, where the bolt goes through to the seat. In 63, it was just a continued round bar. So this is a one year specific to 64. Um, also has the correct little Q um, bolt for the seat. Um, in 1964 and 
all the early like 63 to 65 Schwinn's had this longer um, extended type seat clamp here and it also will have um, an AS on the bolt that stands for Arnold Schwinn. Um, all 63 and 64 um, frames were this shorter style of frame. Um, another unique thing to the 63 and 4 Stingrays were the wheels. Um, up front you got an S7 28 spoke wheel and out back you got an S2 heavy duty 36 spoke wheel. Um, in 1965 they went to a 28 spoke front and back so you got a bigger um, or heavy duty wheel on the back for on the early stingrays um this was this is the original crank i pulled it out um it's correct 64 date code and everything on it re-greased the bearings and everything on um, this sprocket it's also the original one that came on this bike from the factory um these are the correct style pedals that would have come on the early stingray um, these waffle style pedals with the um, with this style end on them. Um, usually um, these kind of rotate. I think they were supposed to from the factory, but originally they were a little bit tighter. Um, you know, these bikes are almost 60 years old now, so these get a little bit loose. Um, these bikes came from the factory with a black chain like this. Um, also. Another thing on these um, early Stingrays, they had a, a lot larger um, rear axle nut than what they went to later. It was a little bit smaller axle nut. Um, this bike, these aren't the original tires that came on the bike from the factory. Obviously, this bike's been rolled and used over the years, but uh, these are basically the same style tires that would have come on this bike from the factory these tires are actually vintage though they're probably from the late 60s or early 70s but you would have gotten this knobby style back tire and then a brick tire up front um, on the super deluxe that came with the springer fork um, this is a really really my favorite look on a stingrays to have that springer fork this looks so cool um, one neat thing also is it has the um, AS on um, the fork bolts also that stands for Arnold Schwinn um, which he was kind of partnered with Schwinn as an investor um, from pretty much day one and uh, they included the AS on the bikes up until like the mid 60s and then they got rid of that they bought him out and then just started putting the S for just straight Schwinn. Um, these early Stingrays also have this fat, fatter stem on them. Um, these are the correct 64 style um, butterfly handlebars, which were um, a pretty wide handlebar. Um, they ran these through 65. Um, these are the original um, white chubby grips on here. Um, this bike also has... Um, some accessory matching violet um, crossed flag valve stem caps, which I really think are cool. Um, let's see if we can get in here, but this is the original head badge. Um, it's pretty worn, but these are the early 63 to 65 Stingrays. Um, it will not say Chicago on the bottom and it's really hard to see but the trademark R right next to the last N should be silver, not black on these early ones. Um, this is the original correct kickstand, um, which was chromed from the factory. Um, you just have a kickback brake on here. There were no caliper brakes at that time. Um, just basically a nice, simple, very neat looking single speed single kickback brake really cool bike super rare very desirable everybody that collects these old schwins wants an early one and this is probably about as you know cool of an early schwin that you can get so i'm super happy to have it uh, one thing i forgot here um this is the correct 
um, reflector bracket for these early Schwinn's. This would have only been on these square back sissy bars, um, 63 and 64. Um, it clamps around and bolts, and then you've got this smaller little round um, reflector here. That's correct for 63 and 4 only. Um, so that's basically the overview of the bike. I hope you guys dig this. If you've got any more questions on on this bike or on the early Stingrays or Stingrays in general, leave a comment. I can usually try to help you out as best as I can. But we're going to take this thing for a ride. I have not rolled this bike yet. Um, so we're going to see how this goes. I've never rolled one of these early Stingrays either. So this is going to be pretty cool. Um, so uh, let's go take this thing for a ride. All right, guys. So let's take this thing for a ride. Now, I've heard from a lot of people that although the solo polo seats look really cool they are not the most comfortable in the world so we're gonna find out right now so sitting on the bike um, it's definitely not a super comfortable seat um, it just kind of feels like you're basically sitting on a board although it's not too bad um, but otherwise I love how these bars feel these are probably like the coolest looking bar that ever came on a stingray they're nice nice and wide and high and and really have that cool ape hanger type look on it here's a look down at the springer and that cool uh, remnant of the purple paint one thing that i really like on this bike is where the original schwing tampo was the most of the whites worn off and it left the original purple paint underneath so it's basically you know schwing in purple with the little stars and it just kind of looks really cool i really like the patina on this bike even though it's pretty worn it just has a neat look to it so we got our kickstand up and uh let's take this thing for a little bit of a ride i really like the single speed bikes the best um with these little cranks you really gotta pedal quite a bit to keep the bike going but this thing rolls pretty good um with the shorter wheelbase it's got a really nice tight turning radius handles pretty good um we just have a kickback brake on here so let's try that out that works pretty good um but just i really like these little um single speed this single brake just a fun little bike to ride around this probably wouldn't be something that you'd want to take on a long ride because your legs would really get a workout um, but it's a fun little bike to ride it's super cool and people really get, would dig something like this again this is like every swing collector would love to have something like this in their collection i'm super happy to have it in my collection really happy to be able to ride this bike around um, I hope you guys dug this. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber to Hanson Speed Shop. Go check out the channel for other muscle bike stuff and a lot of other cool uh, car and bike videos. Otherwise, until next time, guys, get out work on your own projects. Get those hands dirty and greasy. Stay cool, and we'll catch you cats on the next one. Thanks for watching.